Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron, I'm a junior doctor working in London and in this video, we're gonna talk through how you can take a focused respiratory history and then we're gonna look at five really common cases that could come up in your respiratory history session and how we can go about presenting those cases. Also, if you've got your finals coming up very soon and you wanna jump straight to the cases, then please feel free to go for it. Also, just a little plug from me at the start. If you haven't already, then please, please drop a like on this video. One of the big reasons why I decided to make this video was because on my other more general history taking video where I talk about this eight step approach, I'll put a kind of link somewhere up there. Loads of you said you wanted more history taking videos. So that's why I made this video. Also drop a like on this video just because you can get good karma for all your OSCE exams. Anyway, let's jump straight into it and look at this eight step approach, but tailor it for a respiratory history station where almost all the time the presenting complaint is shortness of breath. Okay, so step one is initiate the session. And this involves three things. Number one, introduce yourself. Number two, confirm you have the correct patient. And number three, start to build that doctor-patient rapport. So, hi there, my name is Aaron Kiru. Is it Mr. Smith? Okay, I understand you've come in feeling short of breath. First of all, I'm really sorry to hear that. I've asked for some nebulizers, they should be on their way. Offering something like nebulizers is kind of like pain relief. It straight away gets that patient or the actor straight away on your side right from the get-go. Okay, on to step two, which is screen for symptoms. So the point here is to try and identify any other problems that this patient has been experiencing. So you mentioned you're feeling short of breath. Have you noticed anything else? Oh, okay, so shortness of breath and a cough. Anything else at all? And the point here is that you're trying to identify all the different problems that the patient has, so you can then go and tackle them individually. Okay, step three is gathering information. So this is where we look at each of those symptoms individually, and for each of them, we start with a very open question, such as, tell me about your shortness of breath, and then we listen, 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 as the patient gives us lots of information before narrowing down with more focused and closed questions. So the focused questions for anyone coming in with shortness of breath can be remembered really easily with the mnemonic one resps, which Dr. Deben taught me on the Oz's Room finals course. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So what is one resps? First of all, O stands for onset. So did the breathlessness come on suddenly or gradually? N stands for nature. So is the breathlessness worse at any particular time? So for example, asthma tends to be worse in the evenings, whereas COPD tends to be worse in the mornings or during the winter. E stands for exercise tolerance. So I can see you're really short of breath. How far can you walk before having to stop? R stands for relieving and E stands for exacerbating factors. So does anything make the breathlessness better or worse? S stands for sleep. So have you ever woken up in the middle of the night feeling breathless? And this is seen in heart failure patients and is called PND, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. P stands for pillows. So how many pillows do you sleep with at night? Once again, this is a heart failure question and lots of these patients get breathless when they're lying flat, so they use multiple pillows to counteract this. And finally, S stands for smoking. So do you smoke and if so, how many? Okay, on to step four now, which is summarize. Examiners absolutely love to see students summarize and I think this is a perfect time because we've just got lots of information about all of these symptoms. So just to summarize, you've mentioned you've been feeling breathless for two days and it seems to be getting worse at night. You've noticed it particularly when you're walking up and down steps. And also you mentioned you've had this new cough for the last week with some green sputum, but you haven't noticed any blood in the sputum. Is that correct? Okay, so on to step five, which is risk factors. So this particular part of the history, I always used to miss out on, which is why I've given it its own section. And the point of this is to really try and help you narrow down your differential. And I think examiners really like it when you're trying to narrow down your differential rather than just kind of blindly asking vague respiratory questions. So for any respiratory history, I like to ask three groups of risk factor questions. So the first group is very specific RESP questions. So do you have any pets at home? any recent foreign travel, and have you ever been exposed to asbestos? Then we go on to the VTE risk factor question. So any calf swelling, any recent surgery or long distance travel? Do you take the oral contraceptive pill and any previous clots in the leg? And the final group is respiratory cancer questions. And in particular, what I'm trying to focus on is potential complications from 
different types of respiratory cancer. So have you noticed a hoarse voice, which might indicate recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy? Have you noticed any back pain, which could indicate bone metastasis? And finally, any flushing or diarrhea, which may suggest carcinoid syndrome. And all of those are three common complications from respiratory cancers. Okay, on to step six now, which is your systems review. And this is where you can do a body system based screen of any symptoms that your patient may not have mentioned in your initial screening that you did right at the start of your history. So for any respiratory history, the questions I like to ask are chest pain, cough, wheeze and sputum. The other, the other thing I like to do in your systems review is to ask about constitutional symptoms and these are kind of a group of four symptoms that can affect any body system. So fever, weight loss, fatigue and loss of appetite. Okay, under step seven now, which is the patient's perspective. So the patient's ideas, concerns and expectations. Do you have any idea what might be going on? Is there anything in particular you're worried about? And finally, what are you really hoping for today from the doctors? It's really important though not to just clump this part of the history right at the end, but rather be fluid, be dynamic, try and kind of pick up on a patient's cue and kind of insert the patient's ideas or the patient's concerns. And finally, step eight, which is your background history. So that includes past medical history, drug history, family history, and social history. And it's nice at this point to kind of signpost your examiner that you're moving on to this section. So I just wanna ask some background questions now. Are you normally fit and well? Okay, do you suffer from any medical problems? And then that's it. That's kind of the eight step approach, tailoring it to take a focused respiratory history. What I really like about this approach though, is it allows you to then translate that eight steps into a really concise format to present your history findings back to your examiner. So the way I like to present my histories is to start off with a little bit of an introduction. So the patient's name, age and occupation. I then mentioned their main presenting complaints. So this is all the information I gathered from my open and closed questions. The next thing is to mention any other symptoms that I got from my initial screen of symptoms. I then like to mention the patient's perspective. So their ideas, concerns, and expectations. I then go on to mention any relevant negatives. And this primarily comes from my risk factor questions. And I finally finish off with my top differential. If you want, you can go even further. You could then go on to mention other differentials that would be lower down on your list. Thinking back to your top differential, you could try and think what the most likely cause would be. And finally, you could mention one or two known complications of your top differential. Uh, so for example, if you were thinking lung cancer, you could say possible complications of lung cancer that I'd want to exclude would be a recurrent laryngeal palsy or potentially carcinoid syndrome. So this first case is your classic history of community acquired pneumonia. So today I had the pleasure of talking to this 62 year old lady, Mrs. Smith, who is a retired teacher. She comes in with a three day history of shortness of breath that's worse when she's walking up and down steps. Also of note is that she's noted a three day new cough with green sputum, but reassuringly there's no blood in the sputum. She does admit to being a very heavy drinker and she drinks over 50 units of alcohol every week. What she seems to be most worried about is potential lung cancer. My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly there's no chest pain, there's no wheeze, there's no smoking history, and there's no VTE risk factors or weight loss. So putting this all together, my top differential here would be community acquired pneumonia. However, other differentials that I'd like to exclude, which would be less likely, would be other respiratory conditions, such as potentially an exacerbation of asthma or COPD, and also cardiac causes of breathlessness, such as angina. Thinking about the community acquired pneumonia and the possible causes, I think the most likely responsible organism here would be strep pneumonia. But also given the kind of heavy drinking history that she mentioned, I'd also want to think about potential Klebsiella pneumonia. Possible complications of pneumonia that I'd want to exclude would be kind of type one, type two respiratory failure, as well as potentially a lung abscess. Okay, so onto the second case, which is a case of lung cancer, which is exactly the case that I got in my final year respiratory history station. So I had the pleasure of talking to this 60 year old gentleman, Mr. Smith, who's a retired teacher. He presents today with a three month history of increasing breathlessness. He says he used to be able to jog two kilometers, but now he gets very breathless, even on minimal exertion. Also of note is he has had one episode of recent hemoptysis. He also reports significant weight loss recently, an extensive smoking history of over 20 pack years, as well as kind of some recent lower back pain. What he seems to be most worried about is that this entire thing could be quite serious and he's quite concerned as he's the sole carer for his mother. 
My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly he reports no chest pain or wheeze. There's no VTE risk factors or recent foreign travel. So putting this, all of this together, I think my top differential would be lung cancer. Um, other differentials I'd want to exclude, would be, which would be lower on my list, would be other respiratory issues, such as potentially an exacerbation of COPD, and also cardiac causes of um, breathlessness, such as angina. Thinking more closely about the possible causes of this lung carcinoma, I would be most suspecting of small cell cancer, especially because of the lower back pain, which may suggest bone metastasis, as well as the extent of smoking history, but I'd also want to consider squamous cell carcinoma. Possible complications of lung carcinoma that I'd really want to exclude would be complications from kind of compression, so things like recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy or a Horner syndrome, such as a Pankos tumor. I'd also want to exclude paraneoplastic complications such as carcinoid syndrome or SIADH. Okay, so onto this third case, which is a case of pulmonary edema. So I had the pleasure of talking to this 60 year old lady, Mrs. Smith, who's a retired IT specialist. She reports a three month history of noticing swollen legs, which seem to come up to the knees on both sides and seems to be worse at the end of the day when she's been active during that day. She also reports a two month history of feeling breathless. She sleeps with three pillows a night and was diagnosed with heart failure three years ago. She seems to be most worried that this could potentially be cancer. My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly there was no chest pain, there was no cough or wheeze, no recent foreign travel or weight loss, and there's also no smoking history. So putting all of this together, my top differential here would be pulmonary edema. However, other differentials I'd want to exclude would be other respiratory issues, such as potentially a COPD exacerbation or cardiac causes of this breathlessness, such as a silent MI leading to pulmonary edema. Thinking about the potential cause of the pulmonary edema, the absence of any kind of obvious history of a recent pneumonia, plus given the, ortho the orthopnea that she mentions, as well as the past medical history of heart failure, makes me think this is most likely pulmonary edema secondary to congestive cardiac failure. So this next case is a case of a pneumothorax. So I had the pleasure of talking to this 62 year old gentleman, Mr. Smith, who is a retired investment banker. He reports a three hour history of sudden onset breathlessness, which came on at rest. Also of note, at the same time, he noticed a seven out of 10 central chest pain, which was pleuritic in nature. He has an extensive smoking history over 25 years and was recently diagnosed with COPD. He seems to be most worried that this could potentially be COVID-19. My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly he reports no cough, no wheeze, there's no recent foreign travel or weight loss. So putting all of this together, my top differential would most likely be a pneumothorax. Other differentials that I think are less likely would be respiratory differentials, potentially a pulmonary embolus, as well as cardiac differentials such as a myocardial infarction. With regard to the possible cause of this pneumothorax, the absence of any recent history of trauma or any past medical history of connective tissue diseases such as Marfan's, the presence of an extensive smoking history with COPD makes me think the most likely differential here would be pneumothorax secondary to COPD following rupture of a bully. So onto the final case, which is a case of tuberculosis. So I had the pleasure of talking to this 27 year old Indian gentleman, Mr. Patel, who's a student. He reports a three day history of feeling breathless, which is exacerbated by any activity. He also mentions a few day history of constitutional symptoms, which include a fever. He seems to be most worried that this could be cancer and he's quite guilty about smoking. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly he reports no wheeze, no VTE risk factors and no weight loss. So putting all of this together, my top differential here would be tuberculosis. Other differentials that I think are less likely could be respiratory causes such as atypical pneumonia, as well as cardiac causes, potentially a myocardial infarction. Um, thinking about possible complications of tuberculosis, I'd want to exclude would be uh, potentially POTS disease as well as TB meningitis. Okay, so there you go. That's a very, very content heavy video. So apologies, first of all. 
we've kind of split this video into half. The first half, we looked at how we can take a very focused respiratory history using that eight step approach. And then in the second half, we've gonna five possible cases that could come up in your history stations. So hopefully putting all of that together is quite useful for you guys. I really do hope you found it useful. Please, if you did, then drop a like on this video, share it with your friends. I literally look at every single comment on this YouTube channel. So if you did, um, let me know in the comments, let me know what kind of other videos would be helpful for you guys. And I'll do my best to get the content out. So thanks for watching guys. And I will see you in the next one.